Assalamu alaikum welcome back to my channel today we study right ventricle systolic function the right ventricle plays a crucial role in maintaining pulmonary circulation and cardiac output accurate evaluation of its systolic function is essential in conditions such as pulmonary hypertension congenitally heart disease right heart failure and after cardiac surgery we have some challenges of rv assessment like the left ventricle the right ventricle size and shape should be triangular like a pizza slice you seen here the tricuspid annulus should move upward the way uh, to the apex during systole and move back down during diastole the free wall of the rv should contract toward the uh, ventricular septum during systole and they move away from the septum during diastole making the chamber largest at the end of diastole and and smallest in the end of systole in comparison of that healthy normal geometry look at this ventricle this is an extreme case of right ventricle dysfunction if we focus on the right ventricle in this apical four chamber view it looks a um, very different moves from previous one it is a visual difference from normal and abnormal right ventricle now let's watch some quantitative parameters of the right ventricle right ventricle measurement done in the parasternal views are basically of rvot in parasternal lung axis measurement called rvot proximal you see here this is 2.2 cm r22 mm and in short axis pulmonary level called rvot distal you can see here this is rvot distal rvot distal is from 17 to 27 mm and rvot Uh, proximal is from 20 to 30 mm are normal above from 30 of rvot proximal is uh, will be dilated and above 27 of rvot distal will be also dilated for more accurately measurement of rv diameter is uh, apical four chamber taking all the measurements in end diastole first we measure the rv basal from the free wall to the septum then uh, the rv mid and then the apex to the base the apex to apex is called longitudinal measurement so the basal uh, segments a uh, basal diameter of the rv is uh, up to 42 mm or normal above from the 42 mm will be dilated mid is uh, 35 mm uh, normal and the longitudinal is 86 mm is normal above all of these parameter will be dilated consider will dilated right ventricle this is the easy way to measure the rv uh, diameter accurately now let's take a quantitative parameter of right ventricle systolic assessment quantitative parameters of the right ventricle are you see in the video number 1 tapsy tricuspid annular plane systolic exertions number 2 tissue doctor imaging star s prime wave number 3 fac fraction area change let's see one by one how it to be taken fc is widely used parameter to assess the right ventricle function especially how well the right ventricle is contract contracting the longitudinal direction from base to apex and to give a quick and reliable idea of right ventricle systolic function performance the base of the right ventricle where is the tricuspid annulus is moves toward the apex this moves that this annulus moves is directly related how it will the right ventricle contract 
now we will put M D M mode on that lateral annulus mirror the ventricle displacement of the annulus between the end diastole and in systole as you see in the video i have measured the uh, slope which is 2.5 cm or 25 mm normal values of the tip c is uh, equal or greater than 17 mm less than 17 mm will be right ventricle systolic dysfunction limitations angle dependent must be well aligned with the motion of the annulus and it can reflect only longitudinal contraction not global right ventricle function second parameter is tdi s prime wave tissue doppler imaging velocity TDI S wave is used to assess right ventricle systolic function just like tape C, but instead of measuring the moment distance, it measures the velocity speed of the tricuspid annulus during systole. It tells how fast the tricuspid annulus moves toward the apex when the right ventricle contracts. The TDI techniques detect the velocity of myocardial motion, not the blood flow. When the right ventricle contracts, the lateral tricuspid annulus moves toward the apex. This motion generates a positive systolic wave on the Doppler line called S wave. The higher the S prime velocity, the better the right ventricle systolic function. To mirror it activate the TDI mode as you see in the video place the pulse wave doppler at the lateral annulus and measure the peak velocity in centimeter per second but here my machine give me the meet in meter per seconds so this is also a 15 meter per second and the velocity above of 9.5 cm per second will be normal and below 9.5 cm per second will be abnormal. Here in this case we have 15 cm per second. So this is the normal case. Now the third and for global RV systolic function is friction area change. Friction area change is used to quantify right ventricle systolic function not just longitudinal like tape C or TDI S prime but overall con contraction of the right, right ventricle cavity. During systole the right ventricle contracts and its internal area becomes smaller. Friction area change measure in area between end diastole which is largest and the in systole which is the right ventricle is the smallest. For measurement focus the right ventricle freeze uh, the frame at end diastole as you see in the video. Trace the right ventricle into cardiac border excluding trabeculations as I am tracing here the endocardial borders from base to the apex and down toward the base. Okay. Do the same at the end systole as you see here in the end systole I am tracing again the endocardial borders from base to the apex and again down toward the base. The machine will give automatically the calculate the FAC which is 39%. If your machine doesn't calculate by itself, so do it by the formula. Greater than or equal than 35% a friction area change will be normal or less than 35 percent right ventricle will, uh, will be dysfunction 
all right everyone this bring us to the end of today's sessions and the assessment of right ventricle systolic function we learned that evaluating the right ventricle is just an important as assessing the left ventricle because the right ventricle plays a vital role in overall cardiac performance pulmonary circulations and patient prognosis we discussed the three most commonly echocardiographic parameters tape sheet tricuspid internal plane systolic exertions tissue doppler imaging a prime wave fraction area change each of these parameters has its strengths and limitations but when we combine it together we get a comprehensive and reliable evaluation of right ventricle systolic function so always remember no single measurement defines rv performance use multiple approaches if you find this lecture helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel for more echocardiography learning videos you support motivate me to bring more real eco cases and advanced education contents thank you so much for watching see you next lecture